everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. V. Today I'm going to do a video on febrile convulsions. I got a letter from Gareth, who was not impressed with the advice he was given when he went to a local A&E. So, I'm going to go through what we know about febrile convulsions. Watching your child have a seizure is absolutely terrifying. Everything goes in slow motion, you don't know what to do, and so it can be really annoying to go to hospital and be told, we don't know what's going on, but at least your child's fine, off you go, go home. But the truth is, we don't totally understand what happens in the brain during a febrile convulsion. We know that the brain is the most sensitive organ to changes in body temperature. And we used to think that febrile convulsions happened if there was a rapid rise in the body's core temperature. Now we know that it has a little bit more to do with the cytokines and the inflammatory chemicals that are released during a fever. And that may explain why trying to prevent a fever doesn't seem to prevent a febrile convulsion. And sometimes a convulsion can happen at the beginning of a fever before the temperature actually shoots up. We also know genetics has a role to play in why certain children have febrile convulsions. We're discovering new genes all the time, and some of them do have a tendency to develop epilepsy later on, and others just cause simple febrile convulsions. So, what we do know is that febrile convulsions are common. Around 5 out of 100 children will have a febrile convulsion between the ages of 9 months and 5 years. Febrile convulsions are more likely to happen if you've got a family history, particularly a first degree relative who themselves had febrile convulsions when they were younger. Many children will have further febrile convulsions. The figures fall somewhere between 30 to 50% of children will have another febrile convulsion. 90% of febrile convulsions happen between the ages of 18 months and 24 months. Only 6% of children will have their first febrile convulsion after the ages of 3 and below the age of 9 months. Most febrile convulsions are caused by viral infections that cause upper respiratory tract infections, ear infections, and roseola infantum. Most of these infections are viruses that the body can handle on their own and don't require any particular treatment. You should definitely get your child reviewed if your child has any of the following associated with their febrile convulsion. Number one, if this is their first febrile convulsion. Yes, it may be a simple febrile convulsion, you might have a strong family history and so you all know what one looks like and what to do. But if this is your child's first one, it is important that they are examined because we want to make sure that this is not another disease like bacterial meningitis that can also cause febrile convulsion. We want to make sure that we know where the infection is coming from and that your child has recovered adequately from the seizure. If your child has had previous febrile convulsions, if they have an unusual one, particularly if it lasts longer than usual or it only involves one side of the body, it is important that they are seen by a doctor. If, if your child has had febrile convulsions in the past, but this time has no documented temperature associated with the convulsion. If your child has repeated convulsions within the same illness. Mostly, febrile convulsions happen to children who are active and well, and then all of a sudden, bang, they have a febrile convulsion. Now, if your child has been miserable and lethargic and grumpy, and this has slowly escalated into a seizure, then they definitely need to go to the hospital. This doesn't sound like a typical febrile convulsion. Most febrile convulsions will last less than 10 minutes and will stop without any medical intervention. After the convulsion, your child may be sleepy, but there's a very, 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 very low risk that there will be any neurological damage or complications. Many parents ask about long-term outcome. 30 to 50% of children will have another seizure. We have two really good studies from the UK and from Holland that can confirm that there is no associated deterioration in learning and behavior in children that have febrile convulsions. 
Another study also identified that children that have recurrent and prolonged febrile convulsions are likely to have some speech delay. If the risk of developing epilepsy is 1% in the general population, if your child has had a simple febrile convulsion that stopped on its own, involved both sides of the body, and was clearly related to a high temperature, then their risk of developing epilepsy later on in life is only marginally higher than the general population. If your child had an unusual febrile convulsion, that is, it was prolonged, it involved one side of their body, it wasn't very typical in its nature, or if your child has a first degree relative who has seizures that are unrelated to fever, then they're at increased risk of developing epilepsy compared to the general population. So I've put some links down below to really useful resources about febrile convulsions. We're still learning a lot about this and it's really exciting, but the take home message is that if your child has a simple febrile convulsion, there is no need to worry. If it is their first convulsion, please definitely get them looked at. And if your child is generally unwell, then definitely go to a doctor. So Gareth, what should you do if your child has another febrile convulsion? Well, before this happens, make sure you have watched my video on what to do if your child has a seizure. I hope you found this video useful. I'm really looking forward to your questions and comments about it. So send your comments, send your questions, and once again, thanks for watching Ask Dr. B. Ask Dr. B.